Hi, everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to talk more about the definite integral, this time with E's and LN's. So we need to recall the following der derivatives first. So remember the function E to the U? We said the derivative, F prime, was the same times the derivative of the power. So I'm just going to give you a basic example. So if I had y equals e to the x, and I wanted dy over dx, or the derivative, it would be the same, e to the x, times the derivative of the power. Well, we know the derivative of x is just 1. So we can conclude that the derivative is just e to the x. So the original e to the x gives us a derivative of e to the x. OK, so now how about the second one, if I have ln of u. So remember, the derivative of an ln is 1 over the inside times the derivative of the inside. So let's just say I had y equals ln of x. What would the derivative be? dy over dx. So 1 over the inside. Inside means the stuff that's in the parentheses. So 1 over x times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x we know is just 1. So we can say the derivative is simply 1 over x. So now, when we talk about antiderivatives or the integration, what would be the opposite? If the derivative is e to the x, where did it come from? e to the x. So the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. Now, if I don't have limits, it plus means plus c, right? If there's nothing here or here. Um, and then how about 1 over x? So if I start with the derivative of 1 over x, where did it come from? ln of x. So ln of x and then plus c. Now, when we do the antiderivative, we have to make ln of the absolute value of x. Okay, um, so that's the only difference really there. Um, all right, so example number one. Evaluate the definite integral and round your answer to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to take this integral, and I'm going to break it up into two separate pieces. So the integral of e to the x, we know just from up here, the integral of e to the x is e to the x. And then now let's talk about the integral of this piece. So we have the x, which has a power of 1. So this is where we can use the rule that we did the other day. Add 1 to the power and divide by that power. And then we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 2. So what I just did was I pretty much included an e to the x antiderivative, you know, with the power rule that we did the other day. So this is two things in the same problem. So we're still going to do the top minus the bottom when we substitute. So I'm going to use two parentheses or brackets. This one will be my top, subtract, then my bottom. So everywhere I see an x here or here, I'm going to plug in 2. And then I'm going to plug in 0. So this is my top over here, and this is my bottom over here. So e to the 2, e to the second, minus 2 squared over 2. That's my top. And then the bottom, I'm going to plug 0 in here and here. So I have e to the 0 minus 0 squared over 2. Now, these directions will say round to the nearest hundredth. So what that means is you're not going to be able to put your answer in fraction form, especially now that we have an E. So what I'd actually like you to do is take a minute, pause the video, type this into your calculator, get an answer, and type this into your calculator and get an answer, and then hit resume when you're ready. Okay, so for the first one, I got 5.389 minus 1. And then all we're going to do now is subtract them. So when you subtract them, you should get 4.389. And then round that to the nearest hundredth is two decimal places. So the 8 looks at the 9. So your final answer here should be 4.39. And that should be my evaluation of my definite integral. All right, let's try another example now. So example number two, evaluate this definite integral. So again, round your answers to the nearest thousandth. Fine, so that's three decimal places. So the problem with this one is that it doesn't have an E in it, and it's not really a polynomial where I can just add one to the power and divide by the power. 
So we actually have to simplify this first into something that we can work with. So step one is really going to be to simplify this thing. So we've got the integral from one to seven of this. So what I notice is that they're both being divided by 3x. So I'm going to divide this by 3x, and then I'm going to divide this by 3x, and then I'm going to add them together. So let's do the first piece. 3x divided by 3x, anything divided by itself should give you 1. And then when I do 3 divided by 3x, it looks like these 3s will cancel. So maybe I'll actually show you what I'm doing. 3x over 3x plus 3 over 3x. So these are going to cancel to 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. These 3s are going to cancel to 1 over x, right? We can't just cross off the 3s. We have to have a placeholder of 1. So now we've got 1 plus 1 over x dx. So now this is a lot easier for us to take the integral of. So now let's do that. So technically, the antiderivative of 1, we know that that is 1 x and the reason why is because we can write 1 as 1x to the 0 and then we can add 1 to the power and divide by that power and we simply get 1x. Now you should notice from before that we have 1 over x. This is an ln. So we've got 1x plus ln of the absolute value. Remember we need the absolute value of x. And then we want to integrate or evaluate this from 1 to 7. So now we're going to do top minus bottom, same as we've been doing before. So top is 7 and bottom is 1. So we're going to plug in the top and subtract the bottom. So I'm plugging in 7 everywhere I see an x. So we've got 7 plus ln of the absolute value of 7. And then we've got 1 for the bottom. So 1 plus ln of 1. And we're going to subtract these. So let's take a minute, put this into your calculator, and then put this into your calculator. So you're not going to put in the absolute value of 7. You're just going to take the absolute value and put that in. So the absolute value of 7 is just 7. So you're going to just put in ln of 7. Same thing over here. The absolute value of 1 is 1. So you're just going to put in the absolute value. Uh, you're just going to put in ln of 1. So go ahead, try that, pause the video, and then hit resume when you're ready. Okay, so for the first one, I got 8.94591. Just notice I went two decimal places past the thousands just so that I can round properly. Um, and then for the second one, I got one. And then when I subtract it, I got 7.94591. So we're rounding three places. So I'm looking at the five and rounding it to a six. So 7.946 would be the value of this definite integral. All right, so the hardest part about these problems is the simplifying, the part that we did in the beginning here. So let's look at example number three now. So it's very hard to tell, you know, if I'm going to use E's, LN's, or the polynomial rule until we can simplify this thing. So let's talk about it. Kind of the same thing that we did before. We're going to say, okay, this divided by this gives us something. So let's do that. So X divided by the cube root of X. And now let's do the other side. So 2 divided by the cube root of x. So we should keep simplifying. I know that the cube root of x is the same thing as saying x to the 1 third. So if I do this, let's see if this helps us a little bit. Well, I can't integrate yet because I have fractions. So I need to try to make it a polynomial. So would you agree that I could put an exponent of 1 here? And by doing that, I can simply divide these two things by keeping the base and subtracting the exponents. So 1 minus 1 third is just 2 thirds. So we're getting better here. Now this one, not so pretty. I can't do this, right? I can't subtract the exponents because I don't have the same bases. But what I can do is take this guy and bring it upstairs. So by doing that, I need a negative exponent. 
So 2x to the negative 1 third. And now this is much simpler for us to use. So I want to integrate from 1 to 8 of x to the 2 thirds plus 2x to the negative 1 third, all of this dx, right? So just by looking at this, there's no ln, right? Because I don't have a 1 over x. And there's no e because I don't have an e. So really, this example was just to show you a little bit more of a harder example. You know, that's not necessarily a polynomial. So now from here, we're going to do the same thing that we normally do. We're going to add 1 to the power and divide by that power. So the 2 thirds plus 1, or 3 thirds, is 5 thirds. So x to the 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds. And now let's do the next one. We're going to take negative one third and add one. So we're gonna add three thirds and that gives me two thirds. So we're gonna keep the two. So two X to the two thirds divided by two thirds. And we're gonna evaluate that from one to eight. So we're before we plug this into the calculator, we could probably simplify. So technically, there's a 1 in front of that x. So we can divide now 1 divided by 5 thirds. We put that in the calculator. And we'll get 3 fifths x to the 5 thirds. And then now this, we're going to put in the calculator 2 divided by 2 thirds. And that should give us 3. And we're going to evaluate that from 1 to 8. So this is much easier to evaluate. Right, so we're going to put the 8 as my top and the 1 as my bottom. So we're going to say top here and bottom here. So I'm actually not going to do this with you. I'd actually like you guys to get an answer. And then we'll start class off tomorrow to see if we all got the same thing. All right, guys, that's it. Have a great night.